Jul på Vesterbro, or Westbridge Christmas, episode 2, Hvornår skal du bruge den, or I guess the direct, the English translation would probably be something like, you need it when. I think that has the right energy for that. Um, I realized in the last video I, did, I neglected to mention Vesterbro or Westbridge is a part of Copenhagen. That's where the show is set. And let's see. Right, I had forgotten. Yeah, this show kind of sort of does have a previously on. It's just verbal. It doesn't use clips, or at least not so far. I forget if that changes. I don't think it does, which is obviously quite the contrast to the average American television show previously on where very much they use clips from yeah um, let's see uh, yeah I think I somehow managed to forget to mention you know another of the things that happens in most episodes at least almost every episode is you know someone opens the door to Vivian Stewart's wife and she shouts go Vic or Get oh get out of here something I guess would be in English anyway, um, yeah so Stuart and Danny talk about it and I think yeah this is the first time we see that when they want to turn off the TV they throw the remote at it I yeah I guess the batteries in it are dead or some something like that or maybe it's just the, their way but yeah very funny um, and the, yeah we get the Nissen or I guess elf or pixie it's not completely the same I don't think Americans or I guess even English people have quite the conception of the that um, mythical creature as as Danes do but yeah um, <laughs> this thing of you know Stuart is like why would I make you know oh wow Rice porridge, I guess, is the is the English term for that. Why would I make rice porridge for something that doesn't exist? Well, yeah, if you don't make rice porridge for it, if it doesn't exist, of course it's not going to be nice to you. You know, just yeah. And yeah, we have a very funny exchange with, you know, Stuart is very explicitly accusing Danny, and he's like, "What are you getting at? I I just I don't understand." Would you stop, you know, would you stop implying and just say it, you know, are you implying that I stole from you? Uh, yeah, which I probably drove people bonkers with, you know, I was, I was, um, a teenager when this first came out, and me and my buddies, every single time there was the slightest, you know, it, if it made any sense at all to, to respond to someone with, uh, yeah, we 100% would. I must have done it like a couple dozen times. I must have been unbearable. And, you know, once Danny finally understands, he's like, oh, okay, but no, I didn't. And, you know, I just, you gave me 900 yesterday. Hmm. Wait, I gave you 600. Well, there were 300 in your, in your jacket pocket, you know. All I have left is the 500 over there. Hmm. Yeah, though, no, you don't have those left either. And... I, I love the description of the date with Andy, Danny and Andy, where, you know, oh, we, we went to a really nice place at the train, you know, train station, just, yeah. And, yeah, and Andy shows up, and they, their greeting is, like, based on them shooting up the drugs, so it's just, wow. And, you know, she immediately recognizes Stuart, you're the one who sees Tove, the the other prostitute, and yeah, we get some some comedy out of that. And you know, I I really love that Danny clearly has no idea. Like, you know, after Andy makes the joke and Stuart is like clearly embarrassed, you know, Danny's like, oh, that's so funny, and he does the, which like, that's that's about like. Men who are in a, a specific, in, in like a romantic relationship with one woman, it doesn't make sense for a guy going to a prostitute. So just, yeah, you know, one of, one of countless jokes where Danny Stardust does not understand a thing, but he still, you know, yeah, he's still using it. And later on, you know, in another joke, he's like, which also like, what? 
that's, that doesn't make any sense in the context. Just makes me laugh way more than it should. And then we meet Kefia, who I will admit makes me laugh on on many occasions, but just yeah, very very racist stereotype. Um, yeah, like you know, in I believe it's the episode after this one, they have some you know supporting characters who are Muslim. So like, it's not that they couldn't find an actual Muslim and and get on camera, you know. And again, I get it. Honest Madison loves playing a lot of different roles. I think it would have helped a lot if they had found an actual, you know. I realize that it's not uh, Dan Danish blackface is not the same as American blackface because American blackface harkens back to when African Americans were yeah when 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 black people in America were slaves and the the minstrel shows and such which you know it's that's not uh, Denmark doesn't have a history quite like that, which is not to say that we never had slaves. We we did, you know the, and and there are a number of conservative Danes who are very very racist against Muslims and and you know yeah people with with darker skin in general. So yeah, it's it's not like there's nothing there that they should be avoiding. And yeah, you know, from right away, like it feels like there's something about him. Like we are encouraged to mistrust him. I do quite like the the joke about you know, oh, great eye, wow, really great eye, you know. So this is the the hot dog stand that's usually in front of the you know. I actually don't even yeah the, the government building. Oh, great eye, and it's missing an engine. Really great idea. You know, just let's, and and you know part of the joke there is Stuart is ridiculously naive that this is just yeah, um, and yeah I I quite enjoy you know how soon can you have it ready as soon as at all possible wow that sounds vague but I'll take it <laughs> which is also like I've I've many times in my life been like you know I mean it's nice that you you know. As soon as possible means that you're working on it. Means you, yeah. But that is still very vague. And it's, yeah, Stewart told them not to hand, not to touch his stew. So of course they immediately went for it. And let's see, yeah, and and Randy excellently gets a hair in like oh so gross. And I love the details of like she's got like two of her fingers. Like in in uh, what is that called in English? Um, yeah, like she she broke those and now she's got the the, the yeah and the the um, what's it called? She's got like her teeth have uh, holy crap Ret retainers I guess is what they're called in English. Um, yeah, it's, you know just some some great. They they really they they clearly put a lot of effort into the look of each character here, and then you know yeah oh they're celebrating because she's pregnant, and you know Stewart says you know again does the thing where he starts with a, a nice sentence and works his way down to something not very flattering, and he ends with the phrase who did you screw. In the uh, actually, how do you translate that? In the in the st uh, street door. Let's go with that. I think you piece together what that means, certainly. And that's like, I know that, and I I, I guess I yeah I I guess Honest Madison saw that as a kid because that song, the original song. Is not about sex. It's about kissing. Um, it's from 1967. Uh, it's from the this this um, sh uh, variety show. I think it's called where like you know 
one person will come on and sing, another will come on and perform another way. They have like comedy sketches, you know. Circus uh, Revue is what it's called in Danish, I guess. Yeah, cir cir Circus Revue. Revue? Rev yeah, something like that. You know, and yeah, like, it's, again, Honest Madison was born in 75, so eight years before he was even born, this thing, you know, it was performed live and thankfully it was also filmed, which is why it's possible to watch today. Um, I believe I have the DVD somewhere, but I have no idea where. I, uh, yeah, um, but yeah, um, Dirk Passer, who, you know, if you're Danish and you have no idea who that is, you're going to make me feel ancient, because I grew up watching all of his stuff, which, again, you know, he, he was, he had died before I was born, but he performed in a lot of movies. Sang that song with Daimi Gentle, if that's how you pronounce that, who was born in 1944, and who's actually still alive. She's 79 years old now. So, yeah, um, and, I mean, it says here that she's still active, she still performs, um, let's see, but anyway, the, the, yeah, um, so, so again, like, you know, it's, it's, it's a funny reference, you know, taking a song about, you know, because it is, the, the song itself, the original song is, is fairly innocent, like, it's, it's this thing of, the, the, uh, yeah, um, I, I mean, okay, it's not nothing, but, yeah, it's basically, like, the, the, um, yeah, the character performing the song was, like, um, yeah, she's, she's 17 years old, which, okay, it's a little creepy, yeah, um, and, yeah, she, she kissed someone in her street door, which, you know, yeah, various, the, let's see, yeah, her, her friends ask, who did you kiss, the, let's see, yeah, her, her mother was upset, her father was upset, and, yeah, you know, but, yeah, in, in 2003, you can take that and, and say, you know, and, and, have a character ask a pregnant woman, you know, so who did you screw? Like that, you know, but yeah, it's. I don't think every single of my peers knew that reference. You know, it, it is. It's, it's fascinating to me, Honest Madison, putting these really old school Danish references in that, like. Because, you know, as much as Honest Madison, you know, I mean, essentially it's only for adults, but a lot of his stuff is very popular with teenagers. Or was back when, you know, yeah, in, in the early 2000s and, and a bit ahead. I have no idea about now, but, um, yeah, you know, it was popular and a lot of, a lot of parents just let teenagers and, and even children watch and listen, even though probably shouldn't um but but yeah um a lot of the young people you know who were fans of him did not actually know these references but yeah um so so yeah um i mentioned the i talked about the racism some so so yeah the, with with andy we have misogyny with this thing of like basically it's every negative stereotype about like you know, she's, so she's, she's on drugs, she's, you know, a, a prostitute, the, the, which, you know, there's a pretty ridiculous amount of, like, when, on, uh, over the course of this show, if they mention a female character, uh, you know, a lot of them we don't actually meet, it's just they're, they're talked about, they're, there's a, a story about them or something, yeah, like, there's usually sex involved, and, yeah, um, so, you know, very objectifying, not really treating them as, in, as whole human beings. 
you know, and, and again, like, it's... I get that Honest Madison has met people, maybe not exactly like Randi and Kifia, but, you know, yeah, he's, he's met people like that when he was, when he was growing up, and he wanted to make something, you know, where he had characters like that. It just, it, it really didn't have to be this, like, harsh and unpleasant. You know, I, I, I've heard him say that he does actually care about these characters, and he, you know, he feels that the audience probably want them to succeed in, in life and such. And I, I get it. I get that it is this, you know, kind of edgy comedy. I just, I wish that the, I, I don't think it had to be this misogynistic. And again, I think it would have done a lot if Randy was played by an actress, you know, and, and like, there are a lot of, you know, Denmark has a, a number of, like, female stand-up comedians as well, you know, which is, Honest Madison started as stand-up comedian, or, let's, yeah, he, there was one stand-up performance where he did really well, and then I think he did, then he did, like, radio for a few years, and then he went back to stand-up, it, it's something like that, you know, but, yeah, I, I feel like if he had chosen one of those that could have, you know, brought, like, it, it feels a lot like it's, you know, a guy venting about women that he's had negative experiences with, and it just, yeah. Um, that is it for this one. So, yeah. Um, I will try to make the next one tomorrow, the 3rd of December. So, yeah. Catch you then.